I first became fascinated with attempting to print cyanotypes on Japanese washi paper after I had saw Masayuki Nishimaru, a brilliant printer in platinum palladium, uh, print a platinum print on uh, Toza washi. And the process looked so delicate that I really wanted to see if I could do it with a cyanotype. And the only issue with washi as beautiful and as strong as a paper as it is when it's dry when it is wet however it becomes an absolute nightmare you can put it in water uh, for 30 seconds to a minute and it will go nearly translucent and then finally more or less just dissolve into a mush and of course this poses a problem with the cyanotype process because the relatively large amount of water and washing that you need to uh, oxidize the print and as well get rid of the excess emulsion after it's exposed. And you can see here the paper is just insanely delicate when wet. It had been in the sink for about a minute. I tried everything from spraying water on the uh, print to pouring water on the print. You can see here, here just pouring it over uh, eventually just dissolves the print that comes apart tried diffusion rinsing nothing worked the only thing that I've come up with and what we're going to talk about here today is something I'm calling the Welch method for washing cyanotypes on Japanese washi you need very little tools none of them specialized that's what you see here a sheet of plexiglass a screen mesh this is a vinyl screen torn right off of one of my windows here uh, don't use a metal screen make sure it's plastic or vinyl two empty film canisters, 35 millimeter, and a rubber band. And half of this stuff you actually don't necessarily need. Really, all you need is the mesh. Now I'll go ahead and say this is not gonna be a step-by-step how-to on printing cyanotypes. I'll do a full video on that beginning to end here soon. Uh, so generally you coat the paper, expose it as you see here, and as soon as Leia gets done scratching her back, we'll take the print in and begin the actual wash process and she's done oh and uh, I know this uh, contact printing frame is a little unorthodox it's actually the first one I ever made when I started printing cyanotypes and it works just fine so if it's not broke don't fix it so here we have the image latent image on the washi paper the paper itself is very durable when dry. Make sure when you're laying the print on the mesh like this that it is dry. The uh, plexiglass is dry or whatever your surface is, is dry. When you start rolling, make sure you roll the mesh a little bit, maybe a roll or two, two before it actually contacts the print. It uh, helps prevent any kind of, well, as much wrinkling or binding as possible. And don't roll it up too tight. Uh, roll it up, like I said, about the size of the film canisters. If you're using those, about an inch wide or so. So on goes the film canisters. And I'm going to be using both the film canisters and the rubber band just for demonstration purposes here. Again, you really don't need those. But it just helps hold everything together. And the film canisters come in handy here in just a second, and I'll show you why. So there's our package. I'm going to, well, there you go. That's another reason for the film canisters. You can just set it up there um, while you're doing something else. And like I said, this is not a how-to, but I will tell you what's going on here. I'm going to fill the first wash uh, in the sink with a 4% white vinegar solution. It's essentially acetic acid. It makes an acidic first bath, and it helps with the contrast. But as we go forward, it'll be just a plain water bath. Keep your eye on the rubber band there. So I'm going back and forth with the agitation and rolling at the same time. I also like to pick up the entire roll and invert it. It just helps to uh, distribute the water and uh, give a more even rinse on the print. Removing the caps, just to show you that you don't actually need those. And like I said, you don't even really need the rubber band if you just can uh, try to hang on to the mesh roll, but it really, really helps. There's no set time on washing. With this method, it's really going to be determined by the size of your print and the density of the emulsion on the print. Generally, I go until the water is that beautiful bluish green, drain it, refill with another wash bath, and go until the water is clean. Now, I will mention that you don't want to go much past that. Again, even with this method, 
you want to minimize the wash time to as short as possible and that's going to help you avoid some problems with the paper tearing and uh, anything like that. A tray will help you here. I'm using an 11 by 14 darkroom tray. This is for my peroxide wash, my 2% HH2O2 wash. It helps with the oxidization and uh, gives you a lot deeper blue, I have found, at least in my experience. And the tray just lets you catch that leftover hydrogen peroxide solution and reuse it. Make sure it is coated. A couple of inversions. Make sure the solution goes from the edge to the edge, especially if you're using a full page coated cyanotype. type. Definitely be sure that uh, you do some inversions and make sure your peroxide solution is evenly distributed. For our final wash bath here, I like to use distilled water if possible. Sometimes I don't. So uh, if you don't have distilled water, if you don't want to go through that, you'll probably be okay. But the reason why you want to do a final wash is that even though this particular paper is acid free, when we introduce the vinegar to that first wash bath, we've essentially acidified the paper. So I like to use the distilled water to give it one last good rinse to help with the archival life. Again, it's not wholly necessary, it's just something that I have to do with my process. So now we're ready to unfurl the paper from the mesh, and this is the most tricky part, folks. Um, it'll be okay, you'll probably ruin quite a few prints. Uh, they're not always gonna come out perfect, but the more you do it, the easier it does become, I promise. So start by unfurling the roll. We're gonna unroll it just till we see the edge of the print. And at this point, the washi paper is essentially stuck. It is stuck to the mesh. And we're gonna to have to unroll that and get it off the mesh without tearing it. And this is where good old Bob Ross comes in handy. So uh, we're gonna flip it over just with that exposed edge. We're gonna press it to the plexiglass. And as I said, Bob Ross, his immortal words, a thin paint will th stick to a thick paint. So the print will stick to the plexiglass or whatever your surface is. If you run into some problems with the edges, not wanting to detach from that mesh, just very gently peel them down with your fingers and make sure they're making contact with the plexiglass or whatever your surface may be. And gently unroll. At this point, the washi paper is not really paper, it's essentially a wet, horrible mass that just happens to be held together by the mesh. Gently peel the mesh back. Wrinkles and bubbles are completely normal with this. I have experimented with uh, pressing paper towels or, and uh, some clean cloths on top of the print to help absorb some of that water and flatten it out a bit. You can even use a uh, brayer roller, but the more you um, attempt to do that, the more possibility it is of tearing the paper. So you can see here the wet finished print absolutely beautiful paper. We're going to let this dry. I'm going to show you that uh, what it looks like. And speaking of the drying process, I have not seen any ill effects from drying the paper after washing it with the West, uh, West, excuse me, the Welch method and then re-wetting it to search for toning or bleaching. Um, but like I said, the more you wet it and dry it, the structural integrity of the paper will probably diminish just a little bit. Speaking of toning, I'm experimenting with some bleaching and toning with this very print. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And I'll make another video, depending on the outcome. Thanks a lot, folks, for going on this little journey with me with the Welch method for washing cyanotypes printed on Japanese washi paper. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to post those in the comments. I will actually have this available as a full written article with some better photographs showing the process over at Alternative photography.com you can check out the article there and like i said come back here and ask any questions that you might have i will do everything i can to help you out until next time i'm adam welch thanks a lot everybody